Going on holiday is all about a little bit of R&R. &R. That's rest and relaxation for you and me. But climate change is making some people think twice about going on one of those, because they're just so bad for the environment. So should we just ditch our trips abroad? Or is there a way we could cut the carbon somewhere else and keep going on holiday around the world? Let's have a little chat about carbon offsetting and whether it actually works. Planes already make a big contribution to greenhouse gas emissions and it's growing fast. In fact, it's estimated that just one trip on a return flight from London to New York is like melting almost seven metres squared of Arctic ice. And remember, that's per person, so that's a lot of ice. Think of it this way. The amount of carbon you'd emit is the same as driving more than 11,000 miles. You could literally drive to New Zealand. And to make things worse, the amount of people travelling by plane is expected to more than double in the next 20 years. Which means more flights, more fuel and more emissions. Now planes are gradually getting more efficient. The amount of fuel used per flight is about half of what it was 30 years ago. But the number of flights is growing so fast that emissions are still rising. And so far, no one has come up with a way to cut the carbon out of jet fuel. Some people say the answer is to offset these emissions, and that's when you pay someone else to reduce their CO2 instead. That's what Elton John did when he lent Prince Harry and Meghan Markle his private jet for a little getaway to Nice. Nice. After the papers gave the royal couple a bit of stick for their less than green credentials, Elton John defended the whole thing by saying that he'd paid a company to offset the carbon footprint of the flight. That in fact, the whole thing was carbon neutral. Problem solved. Oh, hello. Yeah, that's right. I've miraculously walked into a forest. So how do you offset your carbon emissions? You could pay to stop deforestation in Tanzania, electrify trucks in the US, or install solar panels in India. There are loads of different ways to do it. But when it comes to flying, less than 5% of passengers choose to offset carbon emissions from their flights. That said, it is on the rise. Last year, voluntary carbon offsets added up to the equivalent of 43 million tonnes of CO2. That's 143 times higher than in 2009. And now major companies like Microsoft, Apple and Disney are using offsets as a way to tackle their emissions. Even your dad's favourite band Pearl Jam has used them. Last year, they paid $50,000 to plant trees in the Amazon as a way to combat the emissions from their tour of Brazil. Now that all sounds really good in theory, but does it actually work? There are some major problems with trying to offset your carbon footprint, which is why I've come to talk to someone from the Aviation Environment Federation. They're a group which looks at the impact of air travel on communities and the climate. And this is Kate Hewitt. Welcome. Thank you very much. So this field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so if I wanted to offset my flights, is it the same for me to pay towards some solar panels in India as it is to plant some trees here in Britain? There are problems, to be honest, in, in both types of approaches. There is a kind of offset that involves paying for measures that will uh, help reduce emissions from some other activity, usually elsewhere in the world. You get a kind of quicker hit in terms of CO2 reduction. The big problem is whether you can be confident that that wouldn't have happened anyway, except for, for, for your offset. You know, all countries now have got climate change commitments. The other problem is that even if that's successful and you stop CO2 being emitted from from burning fossil fuels there, the CO2 from your flight still gets emitted. And um, what about planting trees? So that's got the theoretical advantage that you're actively removing CO2 from the atmosphere so you can better balance the, the, the impact of your flight. But trees take a long time to grow and to start absorbing CO2. And then it's about permanence. How confident can you be that that tree is going to stay and lock away carbon for a long time? Then on top of that, there's a problem of carbon leakage. Ew! But don't worry, it's not that gross. That's where emissions are stopped in one place, but they get worse in another. So let's say you pay to help protect a valley from deforestation. That sounds fabulous. But the loggers, they don't stop. They just move on to a new valley that they've never logged before in a different place. And so they just carry on producing emissions. And when you look into the numbers, offsetting doesn't really live up to the hype. In 2017, a study funded by the EU estimated that just 7% of UN offset projects genuinely led to the promised emission cuts. Yes, you heard that right, only 7%.
So at the moment, the number of people offsetting their flights is actually quite low. If we all started doing that, would that help in dealing with the climate crisis? Not in the longer term when we have to get to net zero emissions across all countries and all sectors by 2050. So if by 2050 we reach a situation where there is net zero carbon emissions. Does that mean we're going to have to stop flying completely? There are ways to, to capture CO2 from the air and to lock it away permanently underground. I think the problem is we don't know at the moment how scalable those things will be, how easy it's going to be to deliver them. So if you want to carry on flying, you're going to have to also pay for the technologies that will remove CO2 and lock it away. Now, just to be clear, we're talking here about voluntary offsets where you choose to pay a company to offset your carbon emissions. We're not talking about carbon markets where companies or countries trade with each other to reduce emissions. That is a separate video entirely, though people have just as many concerns about those as well. In fact, the EU are banning countries from using those kinds of offsets to meet their climate goals after 2021, saying countries will have to reduce emissions in their own backyard. Right, back to what we're meant to be talking about. And let's hear from Edward Hanrahan from Climate Care. His company sell a range of carbon offsetting products. Now, I did ask Edward to come down to the woods with me today, but he seemed slightly hesitant. So instead, we spoke on the phone, and this is what he said he and his company do. The atmosphere doesn't care where we reduce emissions. The climate crisis is a global one. And so um, what we do is direct funding to the most cost efficient and quickest emission reductions wherever they are in the globe. So that's what climate care does. But how does Edward respond to all the criticism that offsetting is just a distraction from a much bigger problem? Obviously, what we're trying to do is get towards net zero. Until we get to a, a situation where our everyday emissions are substantially reduced, we have to take full responsibility for our residual emissions. And the only way we can currently do that is through offsetting them. Now, it's not surprising that the guy selling offsets says they're a good thing and wants you to buy them. But even Edward sees their limitations and says that the climate crisis needs more than just offsets. So the most important thing you can do is to reduce your emissions at source. But if you absolutely have to take that flight, then you should absolutely also take responsibility for the emissions associated with it and offset them. But equally importantly is make your voice heard. Lobby your MP, take action, and make sure that you know, we are getting government action on this at a, at a much higher level. Now, having spoken to lots of experts in the field and some in this forest, when it comes to carbon offsetting, almost everyone has said the same thing, that what we really need is big policy changes to tackle the climate crisis. Governments can make a much bigger impact, much quicker than waiting for individuals to change their habits. But if you do find yourself having to take a flight and want to offset the emissions, then at the very least, you should choose a legitimate provider. There are three standards to look out for. The gold standard set up by the WWF, VERA, or the UN's Clean Development Mechanism. Beyond the choices you make, environmental campaigners say it's time for airlines to actually pay for the pollution from their flights and introduce an aviation fuel tax. And that more research is needed to find low carbon or even carbon neutral jet fuels because eventually we're going to need them. In the end, Cutting your carbon footprint is always going to be better than offsetting it. Your best option is to always avoid taking this whenever possible. How about the train instead? What about a staycation over going abroad? Does your stag do really need to take place in Spain? And who likes airports anyway? Look, we're all adults. You're going to do what you want. Only you can decide whether your flight is worth the environmental impact. But remember, there's no magic bullet and we're not going to deal with the climate crisis by offsetting our CO2. Who do you fly with? BA?